Hello, you're watching Off New X, and today let's talk about a recently finished airing Chinese drama, Wu Mian Zhi Jing, Desire Catcher. This is a 24 episode contemporary drama that has finished airing on the platform Mango TV. Directed by Wang Taotao, written by Zhang Xiaohe as the lead scriptwriter plus four more scriptwriters, based on a novel written by the author Zhou Haohui called Xie E Cui Mian Shi, literally meaning evil hypnotist. This author has a series of books. They all have the same lead character as the police team leader, Luo Fei. Although in his original set of works, this constantly repeating character actually is kind of the same person and not the same person because their timeline and what happens to them actually conflict between different books. And the drama is led by Zheng Yecheng and Xin Yunlai as the two male leads one of them, hypnotist, the other one, a policeman. I have finished watching all 24 episodes and I have a very mixed feeling. I will give it a one gold mine rating. Some parts of the drama performs definitely below the one gold mine line, some parts over. Here we're only talking about the drama version. The book, I have a rough idea about what it is about, but I haven't read it page to page. Right from the beginning of the drama, you're gonna encounter the encounter of the two male leads. Xin Yunlai played in the role Luo Fei, who is a team leader of a crime investigation division of a police station. A very cold and stern person, and you're gonna get to know him better as the story develops and why he's such a personality person. Our other male lead character, Lu Fengping, played by Zheng Yecheng, is a professional hypnotist. Coming in prepared and with a hidden motive, approaching Luo Fei, the policeman, as an officially hired consultant on cases. As they go on investigating different cases, you will also see the main line of why the characters do the things they do and what is the big thing that happened in their past that kind of link them all together. The two male leads plus another female policeman. That's the best way to explain it without really spoiling any important information. Now let's get into the good and bad part as usual. On the positive end, Number one, this drama is very mango production. It has that mango look and mango style. I like how it makes the sets and the color palette and the lighting and the transitions all come together very smoothly and very coherently. It definitely looks like a drama that's been designed and they intentionally want it to look a certain way and they carry that throughout the whole thing. Couple of points that I really appreciate, for example, the leading actors all use their own voice. Although I think both leads line delivery can get a little bit more work. I do hope they improve in the future, but it doesn't create any problem and I much prefer their real voice. One extra point I want to point out is the ending song is just so good, but so obvious because it is a song that literally starts with the singing voice and it comes right at you. And it's a female male singing song with a bit rapping involved. And the songwriter of this song is known to really love writing songs of this particular style that reminds you of many, many high romance Korean dramas. It's gonna remind you of multiple Korean drama theme songs if you watch a lot of K-dramas in recent five years. And it gets into your brain very easily. The first first day when this drama airs, I went in checking and I think they aired six episodes on the same day and I heard that song six times. That night, in my dream, that song was playing in the background in my head for a whole night, at least for the amount of dream I can remember on the night. So if you're a person who can easily get influenced by music, listen to it with caution. And in a way, I almost feel the song is too big for the drama itself, just because the drama is not so dramatic and tragic. I mean, the song sounds like everybody dies in the world. Then the second thing, let's talk about actors casting in the roles. The other positive thing for me, even though this drama has a lot of problems to me, at least I don't have a problem with most of the casting. And I really appreciate that they pick really suitable actors and actresses for almost every role. Two main leads, Zheng Yecheng and Xin Yunlai, I did ship them a bit, particularly the early stage of this drama. Later, because the plot kind of falls apart and when the logic of things don't work out so well, kind of find it's really hard to sink into to the personal relationship. But I'd say the earlier parts, oh, there's definitely push and pull and there's intentional shots that they made for, you know, like just like 
helping people to ship them. They are not BL couple in any way, okay? But you can think about it as bromance and they really go together very well. The two actors seem to get along really well and then on-screen chemistry is pretty nice too. In terms of their individual performances, Xin Yun Lai, when it's highly emotionally charged, needs a bit work. He tends to completely lose control of his clarity of dictation and voice. It sounds extremely untrained. The voice needs a lot of work when he is too emotional. In that department, Zhang Yecheng kind of has more experience over the years, has been working definitely on more projects, so you definitely can feel he's a more experienced actor. In this drama, he has a wig. I think because of the time scheduling thing, he has two different hairstyles in this drama and they just can't do it on his real hair, so 99% of the time in this drama, that curly hair is a wig. I mean, it looks good, but then you can tell it's a wig because the hairline is different from his natural hairline and in different shot, the length changes and sometimes the style changes also where they put the hairline slightly shifts because different days different makeup artists probably and it's not just always working out perfectly and if you're very sensitive to these things it may bother you i really can tell people's hairline like within millimeter accuracy and when it shifts the face instantly changes into another face to me and it's very weird so for the two male leads i'm more than happy i like their individual character their acting overall and then their chemistry then for the supporting roles the actress He Yu he, who plays the main female role in this drama, Liang Ying, she's pretty good. I really like her character arc. Then there's a policeman character, Xiao Liu, played by Hu Wenzhe. He's definitely intentionally written as some kind of emotional turning point for our main characters. Very lovely character and probably most of the audiences watching this drama will really like him. Then there are many cases, so it has different unit characters. You're gonna come across a couple of familiar faces from the days of of Guardian. If you were a Guardian fan back in 2018, when you see those faces show up and they have pretty important plot, you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna laugh secretly. Then the main boss bad guy in the story, not gonna spoil that person here, but he's worked with Zheng Yecheng before in another drama. He did a pretty decent job playing this role. The last thing about this drama is, although I feel after episode 16, pretty much it started to crumble in a very expected way, honestly speaking, previous episodes and previous cases, some of them are really good. It reminds you of certain criminal cases you come across in the the novels of Priest in Guardian and also in Modu. If you've read those two books and you know Chao Yunlan, Shen Wei, Luo Wenzhou, and, and Fei Du, you would know the vibe of those criminal cases in those novels. It would remind you of that heavily. These are the positive things about this drama. Now let's talk about what's not good and what definitely brings down the rating a lot. And to me, it makes it not a really qualified crime drama. In no way I can compare it to, say, last year's Under the Skin. Both are two male leads, breaking cases, police drama with many unit stories and a main line. Think about that, it's almost exactly the same structure. But why I wouldn't even compare these two dramas? Because in comparison, Under the Skin is based on real things. They got real cases and they included a very specific profession, which is the portrait artist, which do work in China for real and they are quite legendary. So that whole story is solidly based on something that can happen and does happen for real. Whereas this drama, when you hear about it, it's about hypnosis and breaking cases and criminals who do bad things by hypnotizing a lot of people. It gets into the land of uh, imagination and as the story develops, you do see that it starts to go out of control in terms of how much hypnosis can do. And then on top of that, it creates a big boss of the story who is behind all those things from day one, it feels way too unrealistic, way too ungrounded. For example, that bad person was pretty much nobody, has no resources. Early on in the story, before this story's timeline started, he like a couple of years before, not so long after he becomes this big boss who owns this big company who has so much money. I think, where does that come from? And then once he get there, his actual goal of like what he wants to do is so much like a primary school kid's imagination writing between classes. It's like they make up own fiction <laughs> on their notepad. You make adults to play that out. It's a little bit laughable. And to add on top of all those is 
an attempt to make the characters more deeply entangled with each other than they really are, care about each other more than what you've really built up for, for the two male leads. So if you watch to the end of episode 16, you'll know exactly what I mean. There's a big thing that happens in the drama and you totally see that it's a trick because there's another eight episodes you know, left. So it's definitely not gonna be that. But because you know all that, is coming and also just the moment when it happens it doesn't quite make logical sense why the two characters would be one reacting in that way the other one doing the things he does it's so hard to not spoil it for you but still actually trying to make my point cross you're sitting there and you're like <coughs> <coughs> you don't have to you don't have to go that far it's a little bit overkill at that point the drama stops and you have to wait for a week for the next episodes to show up, you already know this drama has tipped a point to where it no longer is that believable and it impacts your, for me, like shipping of the coupling. It makes that no longer valid. And as if that's not enough, they would even add a little bit more ridiculous plot to the very last one, two episode where they have this classic scene of because they're two leads, they go in themselves without support or like they know support is coming, but they just can't wait for the big team to come and all the people coming. They have to do it themselves first. And then they've solved all the crisis on a rooftop, but <laughs> it's just so classic of any crime dramas. Then you hear the siren and all the ambulances and the police car coming. I'm like, come on, it's 2023. Can you just like not do that? It's so not making sense. They even had this one plot of, okay, I'm gonna spoil it for you here, which is Zhong Yecheng's character, who is not a professional policeman, who's never been trained as a policeman, who definitely doesn't have a license for a gun, who would actually pull the gun out and shoot a guy where he needs to hit that person at a very accurate, specific point. Otherwise, hit that person other places, it would not work for your purpose. He has to be a sharpshooter in that one second. And he did it somehow. First, it's never gonna happen in China, for real, for somebody who's not a policeman to be able to do that. Again, okay, no. Guns, even for policemen in China, is heavily, heavily, tightly controlled. You can't just pull a gun out anytime, even when you are a policeman who has the right to bear arm. By that point, the whole story just completely crashes. I feel really bad that all the actors on the set, the bad guy, the good guy on that rooftop, they're, they're just playing their heart out. They're being very good. But the whole setup is so unbelievable that as an audience, you just feel so bad for all the actors. Pretty much from episode 16 onwards to 24, it's just like a cascading disaster of things no longer making sense worse and worse. If I ever get the time, I probably will go and check out the original novel because this Drama version has a lot of changes made. The original story is definitely a sexier one. One thing, the Lu Fengping Rao Zheng Yecheng plays is a much darker, not so cute and lovely character. He's the semi good, semi bad person and who has a very clear motivation of why he does the things. And he doesn't quite care about what is the standard morality. And I also believe in the book, Lu Fengping actually has multiple identities. The role that you see him playing in this story and the name he has is a fake name. He has a different name and he definitely did some plan, which I think is why the drama also used that plot. But because the background story got changed, it no longer makes sense. He did something to basically slip out of the whole thing, pretending that he's dead, but he's not. And he has actually different identity and he exits the story. The original story is in many ways much darker and more interesting. And this author's work actually has been made into dramas previously and it's still the law of it role, but in the very almost parallel universe timeline, it's played by Guo Jingfei. I mean, in an ideal world, you'd hope that these dramas can connect and it can make sense and they can actually give back the original character, their complicated and much more flavorful background story and character than the cutified, if that's a word, <laughs> version you see in the drama Desire Catcher. So that's everything I have on the drama Wu Mian Zhi Jin, Desire Catcher. Hope that's useful for you to decide whether you should uh, go and check out this drama. To me personally, I definitely got more editing material of Zhong Ye Zhang's in contemporary clothing. I've already collected all the clips I need for any future edits if I ever make them. I think that's the best value of this drama to me. Still waiting for that drama whenever that comes to <laughs> make him jump another level up. I hope it happens sooner for him and I also hope uh, my channel exists long enough to see that day coming. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.